Hello everybody, welcome to week one of the Valencia Marathon Training Programme. Yes, I said it. Here, we start the training for the next four months and intend to run 3 hours and 10 minutes in Valencia in December. Woo! Let's go. What a day for it. Good morning folks, man here in the planet and uh, welcome to the Valencia Marathon Training Programme. So this is the first episode of the, uh, the Marathon Training Block and today we are heading out for a long run. Uh, I'm going to also be out testing some gels today. So I've got these um, Never Second gels. So as you've probably seen if you've watched any of my uh, other training blocks, I like to try out a few gels, try something new where you can. Um, and with today we've got, the, uh, we've got the citrus flavor, that one there, the green one citrus flavor and then we've got the the berry flavor so we'll see how it goes today probably looking at about um 35 kilometers i just started the video in the car because the weather's absolutely awful Let's take a look at that uh, this is what i'm going to be dealing with all day long <coughs> probably means there's a very good chance that i'll get more long run distance in anyway so there's a little bit of wind about but not too bad so uh hopefully i won't get slowed down too much so this is the start of the Vincent Marathon training block. So what I'll do is I'll also talk about my shoe rotation today. So I'll drop a few clips in about, about that, uh, the type of shoes I'm going to train in and what they're using for. Today I'll be running in the uh, the Vepline X% 2, uh, the red pair. Um, most of the run today will be easy pace. Uh, I will pick it up at some point in there for say three or four, maybe five kilometers, just to keep the speed in my legs. Um, but other than that, it's, it's about running for uh, three hours or so at um, a relatively easy pace and just building in that aerobic capacity. And I'm not sure if I'm going to put the 50k run into this training block. The reason being is because although I've got 16 weeks, got quite a long time to do this training block, um, I've also got another marathon, another race inside that and I've got the Great North Run. Okey doke, so yeah, we get myself out for the run. I'll tell you how I'll go with the gels of electrolyte water. I've got some of that, so a couple of bottles of that. Unived Recovery Mix i will have that after the run, so I'll try and get that in my body within 20 minutes of the uh, the actual run finishing. And yeah, I think that's it. We'll see you around the run. So yes, the uh, the training block is written, and uh, so we're looking at 16 weeks or so. We are going to be doing long runs, probably about, I think about 15 long runs at about 30 to 40 kilometers, where they're going to vary between that. Um, there's a couple of half marathons in their distances that we run at pace. Um, some of my threshold runs will appear in the long runs. So that's probably about half of it. That's something I learned in the last training block and I found benefit me a lot in this one. Um, I am ramping up the pace in the intervals. So, of threshold stints, whichever one you want to call it when I'm doing the intervals. I am introducing the high print balls, something I experimented with and was recommended to me by the, uh, the science lab when I was out in Japan. Um, so, it's really good stuff in the last training block. I went to the track once. I don't feel the need to go to the track too much, but in the schedule I've planned to go to the track three times. Um, the first eight weeks is going to be pretty much base building, um, aerobic base building, so lots of longer runs. So you can see me running on the Keyside, distances of at least 15 kilometers up to 20 kilometers through the week. Um, and then obviously the long run, if I am down on the Keyside or if I go somewhere hilly, um, then it's going to be a 30 odd kilometer range and um, you can follow me on Strava and you'll be able to see all the training as it happens 
everything's on there, today's run's on there, so lots to come. Um, but what you'll find is, as the training goes on, we do a lot more base building the first couple of months, first eight weeks, and with very little, with a little bit of speed work in there, the speed work, like today for example, long run, but there's going to be five kilometers, and I could go pace in there if I can manage it and but as I get into the last of two months of the training block the last eight weeks the, uh, the speed work is going to become more prominent so those runs of the week that have maybe done be 20 kilometers they're going to back off a bit to 15 kilometers depending on the specific workout that I've got right let's crack on conditions like this. We're only 10 k in life, but feels like I barely got started. No sun, bit of drizzle. I've had some uh, sharper rain before life, but it's going well. Okay, so that's the run done now. We did 40 kilometers, which I'm quite happy to get that kind of mileage in. First proper run of the training block. Um, pace 5.39, I think, and we put in three, actually four kilometers at uh, marathon goal pace effort. Kilometers 29, 30, and 31. It was a bit windy, so um, I didn't bother trying to keep that pace going for another uh, kilometer or so. Um, so I wait for the till I went back round um, the quayside um, and just did it at kilometre thirty nine and then uh, a little bit slower in kilometre forty. Uh, but it was good to be able to deliver that kind of pace uh, towards the end of the long run as well. So got a good development of aerobic fitness. Um, two two and a half hours or so I think it was before I did any speed work. So just really easy going. Um, I'm really happy with the run. And in terms of the gels, the never second gels. Uh, there's actually three flavours that I had. Um, I didn't realise that the red one is a berry flavour um, but it also comes in a fruit punch flavour as well so um, I also had that one and the berry one's really nice like that the citrus one, the green one, uh, that was really nice as well uh, the fruit punch one, I wasn't so keen on it, it tasted okay but the problem it gives me is it tastes of a marzipan cake slightly um, I don't know how I did, but it just it took me back like 30 years or something like that, or maybe more, um, to, to when I've had a, a marzipan. It was a long, long time ago because I don't really like it. With some kind of a fruity sauce over the top of it. So, um, yeah, so I think for me, quite happy to take the citrus ones again. Quite happy to take the berry ones again. Um, and they don't really taste very chemically. So, although they are quite big, the only disadvantage I'll say is because they're quite big. They're a 60 mil package. Um, I had them in the back of my waist pouch and I could feel it bouncing around a little bit so I usually tend to prefer the, the kind of smaller size ones. Okay so shoe rotation. Runs where I don't even care about pace at all so let's say it's more of a recovery run. Um, I've got there the Asics Nova Blast uh, which is the first edition. Um, too soft for anything else rather than an easy run for me. Um, I know some people do use them for speed sessions and I think the uh, the twos and the threes are a bit more of a performer, which I've never tried, but um, just too tough for me. So I've got the shoe like the Nova Blast, but I don't really get out there so much because I also use the, uh, so the Zoom Fly 3. This is probably one of my favorite shoes. I use this for everything. Um, I will use it for recovery runs, so you'll only use it for, for speed runs as well. And this is actually a brand new pair that I haven't actually used. Um, since 2020 was, I think it was 2020 when I bought the first pair. Um, yeah, I've never paid full price for these, so I've paid as low as £97 and as most at £110. Um, so you will find me doing easy work in these, and they're, they're quite hard, durable. The performance doesn't really drop off until a thousand kilometres. I think I've done 
1,000 miles, nearly 1,600 kilometers in a pair. That's pushing it quite a bit. But I've, you know, this this I've had I've been using this as a, as an easy day shoe, a long run shoe, um, maybe long runs up to kind of like 30 kilometers. I have done full marathon distance in these. Um, I just have other shoes I prefer to do it in. But yeah, they do appear in my easy day run category. Uh, Puma Deviant Nitro. There's another shoe that I will use for my easy runs. Probably the last one that I would use for my easy runs. So you probably see me doing a lot of like distances up to 20 kilometers, um, as low as five to 10 kilometers. Um, easy runs on the on the key side quite a lot. Um, I find that the shoe is you can you're supposed to be able to pick up the pace in this, but I find it really difficult to find the pace, and I always feel like I'm running, I'm putting more effort into my runs than I'm getting out of it in terms of pace. Yeah, but other than that, it's quite 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 a comfortable shoe and good for the, the easy runs. Puma Deviate Nitro. Um, bit of an outsider, so a bit more running on the trails. Again, that's easy stuff as well. But I've got the uh, the hook here. But the problem is, I've had these for quite a while, and the problem is now only at 200 kilometres or so. I haven't really used them that much because I don't do a lot of trail running. You can see the tread starting to pull away there, which is a bit disappointing. I mean, I know this is really kind of like soft foam, and that's just somehow glued on there. Um, we've got a few more lugs coming off there as well, so up there as well. So uh, probably not the best show shoes out there for durability. All right, maybe you're supposed to kind of use up the shoe um, in the first couple of years or so. But I've had this for well, I've actually had this for getting over three years now. I bought this in 20 in 2020. So yeah, the Hulk Hulk Torrent Two. Um, very good shoe, very comfortable. I like it because it's not traditional Hawker stuff. It's quite narrow on the bottom in terms of what you get from, from Hawker. But I pretty much use that for, for running on the trails only. It's just disappointing that they're starting to deteriorate a bit. Yeah, a bit of a shame, but great shoe for on the trails. When you're trying to, trying to do any speed work, probably between uh, let's say anywhere from 5k up to 10 15 kilometers for me the type there's a few shoes that I use for that so you've got the, the Nike Tempo next percent um, find it pretty much uh, an uncomfortable shoe but that's in my rotation for those kind of sessions they are they are fast they are easier to run in speed they've obviously got the airbags in there that are similar to the alpha flies you get a lot of energy return out of them but I just find them too difficult to run in um, for greater than 15 kilometers or so um, and obviously the big brother the alpha fly yeah these will be doing for for speed work but i know some people use them quite a lot of people use them for a marathon distance that's what they use for but for me um i can't really go with them well after say 20 kilometers my feet ache too much in them probably the only shoe where i have that problem but i probably need to you get used to wearing them a lot more to do those kind of things don't get me wrong they're probably one of the fastest shoes in my rotation that I've got, second or third, I would say, if, if not, could potentially could be the fastest one. Um, I just can't get in with them for any length of time. So again, speed, work, tempo sessions, threshold sessions, that's the shoe for that. Another shoe for the threshold is the um, Asics Met Speed Sky. Uh, this, shoe, this shoe currently holds my PR in the half marathon. However, I wouldn't really take it over than more than half marathon distance um i think i've really struggled to get on that again they're not for you know they're not they just don't feel quite right for me running um a full marathon distance another shoe i've got here a shoe that i use for tempo and threshold workouts again 10 or 15 kilometer distances maybe up to 20 i've run half marathon in it it's the Socony endorphin pro plus um, it's a bit of an older one, and to be fair, I, I did have the speed, um, and it, well, I still do have the speed, but I don't use it very often because it's got a lot of kilometers on there. Yeah, so I run the shoe to kind of like half marathon distance, uh, more so for threshold and tempo workouts. Uh, but they're uh, you know they're very 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 light, uh, quite a snappy shoe, got the carbon plate in, and something I use for kind of speed sessions. Speed sessions on the track, um, pretty much could be the Vaporfly. Um, but this is the best shoe, the Hawker Rocket X, which is a road racing shoe. Um, I can't get it, get used to it on the roads enough, or more so that the performance dropped off after about 150 kilometers. So I was a bit disappointed in that. For me, that's what I tend to get a problem with the Hawker, is that 
the, the new performance that you get out on Chimp seems to drop out pretty pretty quick. Um, although I would say that probably it wasn't a massively expensive shoe. We paid £140 in November 2020 for that one. Um, but yeah, it's lightning on the track. Um, for whatever reason, it feels very light, lighter than, than any other shoe that I've got, although it's about the same as a Vaporfly in terms of weight. Um, and I've just got lightning on the track and can really do the workouts. I think probably what one of the problems is that the heel drop is only five millimeters um, on the track and you can get away with it with the shorter distances. Um, but running on the road, you, you, you just don't feel any heel contact at all on the, on the heel of the shoe. Um, which obviously puts a lot of extra strain on the calves and I think that's probably the main reason why I can't go away that shoe for anything other than a track workout. For me, I, in, my, in my training block I classify a long run for anything over 22 kilometers, so kind of up to half marathon distance. It is, is a medium length distance for me, um, but for a long run, <laughs> anything over 20 kilometers, um, it will be the Vaporfly. I've got a couple of pairs of the Vaporfly. This particular one has lasted me um, up to, we're getting over 900 kilometers in that, so we might be pushing close to a thousand if we haven't already gone over it. And this Vaporfly 2 has, uh, has been really, really durable. I could still do some workouts in it. The, the shoe itself, I wouldn't actually use it for a race condition, um, but I would use the Vaporfly 2. And at the moment, the Vaporfly 2, even over the Vaporfly 3, is the shoe that I would be using for um, all of my marathon races at the moment. Um, there's a there's one that I've used in a, in a race, which I used at the, the last Manchester where my current PR is at the moment. And it just straight from straight from the start line, it feels fast. It feels faster than anything else that we've got. Um, but yeah, still need to do more testing with the Vaporfly 3. I think I've had a good couple of runs, uh, kind of a, a medium half marathon type run. Um, and at least one of the kind of like tempo session in that shoe or an easy session as well. Possibly had three runs in the Vaporfly 3. Um, but really the Vaporfly 2 at the moment seems to be the fastest shoe for me. Okay, so if it's a long run, basically any, any session I do, even if I want to be really lazy on an easy run, I will take out the Vaporfly. So if considering I can get a thousand kilometers out of this, other than doing a race, I would say you could use this shoe for everything. The only problem, or I will use this shoe for everything, the only snag is that you don't want to do all of your workouts, all your sessions in the shoe that makes everything easy for you. I do need to have a shoe that makes life a little bit hard for me in training at times. So, um, yeah, best all-rounder. So there's my shoe rotation. Um, that's the Valencia Marathon Training Program started. Got a lot more to come as we build up for Valencia in December. Um, there's probably only going to be about say 10 maybe 12 episodes in the Valencia training block and um, you're thinking why because it's quite a long time 16 weeks however we do have another marathon that's coming up in between and also we've got the Great North Run there as well which is going to be happening uh, in September so um, and there's possibly another half marathon that uh, I'll be doing but that one hasn't been worked out yet so we're, uh, we're trying to get all that together and uh, you should know in due course so Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time.